Hello everyone and welcome back! We've got the exciting Back 9 conclusion of Battle at Megiddo. Got Dalton here in the booth, ready to finish it up. Yeah, thanks again for having me. Sorry Ben for kicking you out for <laughs> this uh, final C tier of the tour here. His throat was getting scratchy, I think he's excited for the break. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got the MA1 card finishing up for you guys. If you guys missed like, the whole first round in the front nine, please dial back. You want to go back and see that. Um, but we have some really great MA1 players. Uh, maybe seeing a little bit of struggles on the front nine, but they're trying to pick it up and give it the final push here for the last nine holes of a one-day two-round event. Stop number seven of the Greater Peoria Tour right before Greater Peoria Open. Yeah, it was cool to see the success of the tour. This is the first year uh, that I put it on. Seven events leading up to the GPO. Filled up pretty much almost all of them, just a couple that didn't. It was crazy. Yeah, man. it's so good. Yeah, and uh, you know, we talk about trying to push hard to finish up the uh, event here. Hole 10 is a pretty tight technical shot, uh, and this entire course is technical, but you're trying to hit a uh, eight foot wide gap about 200 250 feet down the fairway and um, it's best of luck yeah it's pretty much best of luck at, as like you said unless you can hit this eight foot gap and just continue to push straight um, there is a sneaky right sideline but there's a lot more trees on that side looks like Carson got away with it he did yeah uh, nearly grazing the trees on the left hand side but it pushes up there nicely and yeah the uh, hard packed dirt that we have all around the course you'll get a lot of ground play uh, pretty much everywhere here except for hole eight which were passed but yeah that was an early release from johnny hopefully didn't push too far right there is a cliff on that side a big ravine oh and a nice flip up there for luke yeah yeah that'll play mm -hmm. okay and the colorful chad trying to do another forehand as well Let's see if he can do it too Oh, Keep got it. Space. Got us oh, high. Yeah. It's all right. He's gonna be sitting. He'll have to create a uh, little chip up here. But he pushed pretty far, so about a hundred foot little chip up shot. Yeah, and he gets pretty close to the basket there. And as we pan over to Johnny, really far to the right, he gets up there too. Yeah. Gets up close. Not good recovery from the drive there. Oh, first birdie look. Come on. Okay. Okay. Nubbed. Nubbed yeah, in. Nubbed in. Yeah. <laughs> it was scary. That's okay. really unique. I um, actually want to take this time here to comment on Luke's putt. Like, um, we saw some pretty interesting plays from round one. Uh, I did make a comment. Z Reb is uh, kind of like the highlight of the homegrown form, and he's done a great job to perfect what really, really works for him. But. Uh, Luke, he kind of curls that putt up into his chest, and I, I appreciate the uh, the commitment to get that wrist articulation um, and to commit to opening up the hand to, to putt. But I have noticed uh, in a couple occasions, I think it results in some low putts. It's a nice zippy mm -hmm. putt. Um, and I found, too, a lot of times it's letting the putt sink a little bit lower into your body does allow you the... Uh, the ability to keep it up, get it up higher, I'll say, to keep it higher in the chain. So, um, but it's still cool to see uh, just unique play styles at this level as well, um, and to see it executed very well. So Carson pushing with a good bird. I had uh, Siri apologizing to me, and Siri yeah. apologized to everybody else too for uh, interrupting there. But Power Grip, yeah, shout out Power Grip USA over in Bloomington. They have an online store as well. Huge players to this entire tour. I don't know if it would even be possible without them uh, supporting everything with ideas or even player packs or just anything. Absolutely. We're standing on one of the hardest greens here. You just saw as we panned into the basket there. This is one of the most unique fairways here. It drops down about 20, 25 feet to the fairway and then back up to a plateau on the green. OB lining the whole left-hand side of this fairway. This hole has the most teeth. The yeah. most, and this is the Dang. shot that you need, and yeah. that is the most oh common my. result. Oh <laughs> my! Yeah, 
If he would have just got, if it would have just been maybe a foot higher, he would have been parked right by the basket. Probably one of the best shots I've ever seen on this hole. Absolutely. And that's the thing too. Like, as I said, this hard packed dirt, you hit the ground, you're skipping. You hit the base of this basket. It's the only way for you to get to the plateau. You're skipping past. You're going to have a tough putt. So most people are actually pretty content with to let this drop down and just kind of hit the creek, uh, before the basket and a couple of tree hits there from both Johnny and from Chad. Um, they're just looking to kind of pitch up to that plateau now. So just a nice touch forehand or, or backhand, whatever you're most comfortable with to just get it to land softly next to the basket. It's probably one of the most uh, unnerving approaches here on the entire course. Yeah, and I agree. I, to me, Ooh, good saddle. To me, it's that big ravine to the right that's mo the most scary. I just don't want to be down there, looking straight up at it. You Absolutely. can pretty much only see the number plate. That was a great shot though by Chad, just putting it right under the basket, yeah. opening up the gap available to him, uh, and just kind of sneaking through the little trees that make one side of the aisle. Yeah, and this is unique. On the left-hand side here, there's some l larger mature trees that uh, force you to really pick and hit a small gap. Carson's showing a little frustration. I think he's really pushing, obviously, uh, taking a few strokes on leader here. He's shown that he can uh, compete. Oh, oh my! my. That would have been an insane throw-in. Wow. And I am definitely getting the catch cam up and running for next year, for sure. <laughs> there it is. Great putt. Great birdie, even. I go and talk about hole. the height, and he, he does the same thing and gets a good height on that. Well done, Luke. Well done. Great drive, great putt. Just cleaning up a couple of good approaches here from Johnny. Okay, well done. All right. A little bit of confidence there. Now some just routine tap-ins as Carson and Chad are pretty close to the basket. Finishing up their pars. Getting ready to go to hole 12. All right. Yeah, and that's quite the walk from 11 to 12 as well. And we have a tie ball game. Yeah. It would be interesting going down the road. But uh, Prodigy Disc Golf, they've been helping out with the player packs for every one of these events having their own unique logo on them as well players have been trying to collect all seven of them to get the series uh, hole 12 here though it is a par 4 some of these guys they can push the disc far enough down here and kind of give them a little circle 2 or easy pitch up to get that birdie uh, left side does have a lot of teeth on it with a bunch of tiny little trees right side Kind of opens up into hole 15. Luke gave it a pump, hit a hit a tree about halfway down the fairway, though. Yeah, I, I definitely think some people on the MA1 skill level definitely could get the disc there. Uh, like with the ground play and everything, hitting a shot that goes 420 feet, you can get pretty close to the green. Like that's going to be probably like an 80 foot approach there for uh, Carson. But um, if you push too aggressive and get a really bad kick, I mean, you're turning a, a relatively routine birdie hole into a struggle for bogey. Especially if you hit yeah. early and get into this creek right off the tee. It's a nightmare. But yeah, a good tree direction there for Johnny. That was a good stroke of luck there. Let's see if we get around it. Oh, oh wow. Big, oh, what a massive jump up. I think it just kind of killed the disc, but I went behind the uh, log. <laughs> so I pushed a little bit further and kept going. So interesting stick right there. Uh, Luke here, he's in a good spot. He's got the whole tunnel to the fairway or to the basket uh, from the fairway there. Uh, looks like he hit just one of those guardian trees, but he's got a putt. Yeah, from circle two. See if you can put it in there and Chad putting it out there. Oh yeah, that that looks good. It's pretty much right behind that middle of those triple tree guardians. Yeah. I think Carson was here last round too. He's throwing a little flex shot there. Well done. He got a little bit of a stand up roll to the uh, roughage on the back side of the green, and it looks like that one just sat based upon his reaction. So, all right, a little bit of uh. 
disc selection decision making for Johnny. Going with a little anti flex forehand too. Oh no, maybe not. Oh, you wanted to prove me wrong. There it is. Okay. Ooh, oh, well okay. done. Yes. Oh, that is very Great well shot. done. Yep. Okay, this is the circle two look for Bird. Oh, that is great commitment. Uh, and and <laughs> Luke hoping look, people don't look, call him for a practice stroke for that uh, yeah. show of motion. No, it's not good. <laughs> oh, look. Luke. Oh, back to back. Man, with him being tied up with Carson, he's definitely wanting to, to hold on to all the strokes he's gotten to date or to this point. Yeah, especially knowing that Carson is parked here for the birdie. Yeah, I think that's going to be uh, one step, or two steps in Carson's favor. So a two-stroke swing going from tied to two-stroke separation. And good bird from Johnny. He's fighting back. Been having some woes here. Uh, after a slow start at the front nine, he's pushing his way back to even for the round and trying to make his way under par. And Carson, yep, hitting the putt for the bird. We do have uh, a few players from the chase card and also from the the trailing card, I'll call it the third yeah. card, that are uh, <laughs> making up some strokes and they're they're fighting their way up here too. So nobody really pushing their way to the podium just yet. So all right, and double eagle disc off, another huge supporter of the tour in pretty much everything I do. I've been working with Ryan down there quite a bit uh, and Jay Velez as well. Jay, shout out to him for doing all of the designs and logos for the entire tour in each individual event. Awesome. Yeah, we're going to go to hole 13 where we fake you out with the open look, but then we dive straight back into the woods here. So a really unique kind of right to left bending shot. I think the, uh, the counterclockwise turnover is kind of what most people focus on, um, but some people just want to guarantee to hit the gap. They'll throw the... Um, the counterclockwise. Ooh, that looked a forehand. little early. A lot early, actually. Oh, and that didn't even kick out to the left to the open where you would want it. So yeah, it's gonna be rough. Hopefully, he kind of made a at least a push. Johnny from Johnny, this looks great for a lefty. Yeah, for sure. I think that's definitely gonna be in the uh, the creek sort of category. Mm -hmm. So a little bit short and right, but it should be an uphill putt, and you have a confident run at the basket. Oh, and that's a little bit more overstable, dumping out. That runs the risk of being, like, deep into the, the creek bed um, or maybe even being a little bit short to the right. And this is yeah. a force over. Wow, did that Dead. go to the left-hand side of that yeah. tree? Oh, wow. It's almost like he split the gap that's there. That's an that, anti-gap. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Which is incredible a feat in itself. I'm sure a little bit of an early release, but we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. That was a sick gap, man. <laughs> wanting to show off a little bit, trying to fight back and catch up with Carson. Yeah, I think he's definitely wanting to capitalize with Carson being where he is. This is never a great place to be. Yeah, definitely not. This is actually the old Heiser line that used to exist. Uh, I mean, great out from where he was. He still has a little work to do. Yep. But it's a putt, I think, that's in Carson's wheelhouse. We've seen him can putts like this. Yeah. Goes with the, the easy layup. That's all right. He does have a stroke to give. Luke's just got to make this if he really wants it to swing back. Oh, oh nearly he does was, it. Yeah, it was a good bid uh, at the basket there. Just a little up there. I mean, wow. he's still... Still looking good, though. He's still gaining at least one. Absolutely. Trying to grab some momentum going into these last few holes. I'm curious if we missed something. I could have sworn Chad would be a little bit uh, further to the right, but apparently I got proven wrong. Let's see if this is a bird for him. Yeah. It oh, is. Yeah. Well done. Maybe you got a favorable kick, you know, down the fairway. Okay. Yeah. All right. There's a possibility. You know, there's you know lots what? of trees. Catch can coming soon. <laughs> I just happened to miss it for this one, so. 
Hashtag catch cam 2025. Yes. Yes, please. Oh, oh no. no, Johnny. That's that is... what can happen when you're on the high side and you miss it. Okay, well, un- it could have gone even further, but... Yeah, that's uncharacteristic of Johnny here. He has been missing low, but he's been hitting metal. Like that. Oh. Sit, sit, oh, sit, no. sit. No. Okay. okay. I, I was scared it was going to come right back to him. Like it, playing fetch with a dog. You throw the ball and it comes oh, right yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, and a couple bogeys here. I think we have some players looking at scores. Everyone's just trying to do match play at this point. So yep. Carson losing a stroke back to Luke. Um, yeah. Yeah. Great Lakes Discs. Uh, shout out Alex Daly for uh, getting me in contact with uh, them over there. They've been supporting GPO last year, this year, the whole tour, assisting with getting Crew 42 to come down and filming uh, GPO as well. So much uh, support from them. Go check them out online, or if you're ever in Michigan, check out their store. Yeah, and go to Crew 42 as well. Great coverage, uh, good production. So like and subscribe their content as well. So hole 14, another left to right bending shot. So putting two very similar shots back to back, um, I think whatever you throw for a hole 13, you should throw for hole 14 just one slot slower, yep. essentially. Yeah, I would agree with that, just because you definitely want to be right. Uh, you know, Chad got that favorable roll down the hill. Uh, Luke is even in a good spot there. Yep, so if you just kind of follow the creek, a lot of times your disc will end up standing up, depending on, or no matter which side of the creek you end up hitting, and if it goes to the creek you're usually about 25 feet away from the basket with an uphill putt like that right there yeah perfect (laughs) yep you'd want to make sure that you hit chains for your putt as well okay and that's another straight looking one Uh, that didn't really counter roll though looks like it hit the ground a little early compared to the others Kind of got stuck. He is behind that big log, so maybe he hit that and just stopped. So. Absolutely. And this is a scary one, too. He's got the lefty putt, so if it kind of falls on Heiser, um, it has a chance of kind of doing the little roll back down into the creek. So Or the oh, Anheiser, yeah. too. The ru- that was the a roots. smart play there to give it a little bit of an ante. To, to let it flex it. out and land flat, yeah. Well done. Right. Carson's got to put it up. Hit chains. Oh, that's not no, what you that's want. Not chains and rolls all the way back down to the creek. So he's gonna have a almost similar length and putt, which may not always be the worst case because you know player B, you usually yeah. get the feel <laughs> of the first putt. You kind of know in your brain most of the time what went wrong there. So all you need to do is just make the mental correction, and most of the time you can end up making those. Chad, to get a share of the lead? No. Oh, no. Man, this tight of a race here at the very or It's not really the very end. There's still holes to finish up. Carson, my man. Man, Ooh. no. And with, now it is now, tie. Yeah, and now with that bogey, there will be a three-way tie. Wow. Okay, we'll see how these players kind of finish out. This is uh, going to be a tight one down the stretch. You think they're all checking their phones, or do you check your phone during... Oh, me personally? No, uh, no, no, I've got the setting turned off since everyone has to keep score now. I've got it turned off to where I'm not keeping... Or I'm keeping score, but I don't see everybody's score. A huge shout-out to NADGT for elevating this tour to the next level as well by showing invites to all of the top performers for the entire tour. It's been awesome. They go play the championships in October. It's a fantastic experience. Um, and as we go into hole 15, a two shot par four, 474 feet. This is, I mean, it's a pump. Some people with amazing distance on like a righty hyzer backhand flip up or a lefty backhand turnover could theoretically get there, but you really just want to throw like 300 feet, slightly moving to the left 
and then throw another kind of short chipper upshot. Oh no! He, Chad hits the same tree that Dane did, and I think he actually gets a more unfortunate kick than Dane did. Mm -hmm. Luke giving this a big pump. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be in a good place. A little bit long. He's going to have to invent, invent a fairway for his next shot. But um, how about you? Do you check scores when you're playing? I know you so, haven't played in a yeah, while. Yeah, so it's hard for me because I haven't played a tournament in probably six years or probably so. Probably since they implemented the live the scoring. The live scoring, probably, oh yeah. Uh, I've been too busy running all the events for uh, the community here. Uh, I have no problem taking a step back and <laughs> doing it uh, at all. Um, I, I'm definitely a score checker, though. Okay. Yeah. Um, I used to do bowling in college, and I would always look at my opponent's score mm. all the time to see what I needed to do to step it up. Uh, it's To me, it kind of builds my motivation. Sure. Well, maybe that's something that I could at least give it a, give it a shot to see how it plays out. I haven't given myself that opportunity. I usually just like, hey, I'm going to try to play the best game. If I let my own score kind of worm its way into my head, that'll throw me off. So I even try to avoid keeping my own score. It's more how do I feel about how the round has gone. So mm -hmm. yeah, um, for very sure. rarely, if I, if I feel good about the round, um, very rarely is it actually poor so a lot of times it may not be as good as i would have wanted it to be but as long as i'm you know feeling good about the game um that's really the ultimate goal for me and yeah we got a couple up shots here making their way down to uh the circle two region so um yeah kind of a tough green you know with the fast uh skips that they get off the ground play uh, about 15 20 feet Past the basket, maybe uh, kind of goes into a drop off uh, more towards hole 16's fairway. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to uh, avoid of pushing it too far. I think Carson trusting his uh, blue zone, he throws that all over the place, and I mean that thing's getting beat in. I think it's losing yeah. out on the stability he was really wanting, but he <laughs> he gets up there and um, as well as all the other players. So we're <laughs> Trying to close the gap here for this par four. Well, if does Johnny squeeze through? Spoiler: If you haven't watched any of the other tour events, I would definitely recommend going back. But Carson's definitely got enough uh, winnings to <laughs> pick up a second zone there to replace the uh, stability of that one. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, kind of going back to that too, if you haven't seen any of the other events, yes, Carson's a very familiar face, but actually this was a very fun round to record. Uh, Luke, Chad, and Johnny, all three of them, this is their debut to this. Yeah. And it's great in a second round too, which means that they, they kind of popped in into an event and they performed very well. So I I really enjoyed these opportunities too. As no, no, sit down. No, sit, sit, sit. It looks uh, like maybe it would have curled up right behind that tree. So... Um, this is kind of where I want the channel to live at, is to bring visibility to the other events that other people may just kind of like, you know, great, or glance at, not really pay much attention to. I want to start showing people some amazing stuff, like that nearly made putt from Chad. <laughs> <But> yeah. <laughs> it would be nicer if you made it. <laughs> but no. <laughs> but yeah, I, I love being able to showcase some of the great players here in the area and Okay, I, granted these guys aren't showing the best game right now here, but uh, they definitely made some good grabs to get here to this point. Um, and the coverage that I've gotten up to this point this entire year has been awesome. Yeah, so. I would definitely agree. It's nice to see uh, the play of amateurs as well, give them some visibility. Um, shout out OTB real quick. They've been helping out on the tour by uh, donating CTPs every event. There's like three or four CTPs of discs, hats, other goodies that they've been given. Great retailer online, so I would recommend checking them out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and hole 16, just a routine, what we call the ace hole. This is the yep. ace hole uh, for the entire course. So, um, But yeah, and going back to... You know, the, the amateur space is kind of the unspoken side of the sport. Obviously, I think it's the amateur side of things is what fuels the sport, right? Keeps it going. Mm -hmm. uh, amateurs are the lifeblood of the sport. 
Hence the definition of amateur, uh, being a lover of the sport. So, Yeah, and I agree. Um, it's the, tour, the Disc Golf Pro Tour is huge, and it's a great influence to a lot of players that come into it. But not everyone can get to that level, mm-hmm. or uh, not everyone starts at that level. So, right. you know, the amateurs are what fuels this sport being what it is today because most of the spectators at those events are amateur players and there's like probably thousands of them there absolutely i want to give them their shot when they're shooting a good game so i've got a few players not quite making it to the green but even so if you didn't give it a an ace run off the tee you can give it a good strong bid here for your second and he did it oh okay that is Carson a confidence booster on, for the third. In. Yeah, yeah, it's like a it's like a statement putt almost. Mm-hmm. Yep. So he's now standing one over Chad, and I think Chad's got to make a putt if he wants to keep keep pace with him. So he's on the backside. Okay, Luke and Chad deciding who's going up next. Okay. Opportunities. For players to catch up as well. Okay. Right. Good putt from Luke just to stay up there with him. Yeah, a lot can happen in the last two holes, too. So one stroke separation, not going to be a lot. Let's see if Chad can do it, too. All nice. Right. Chad keeps up with him. Underdog Sports, huge in the community here, not just for disc golf, but all sports here. Paul and Joe, they've been so supportive of anything disc golf in the area can't can't thank them enough for all they've done uh stepping up and helping out the community absolutely man guys this is the gap right here we just flew through you gotta hit a what feels like an eight foot gap about 200 feet off the tee to get close to the basket and so really it's just find a line pick it throw it um Chad getting, yeah, yeah, he picked his line do, through it. Yeah. So that's about as good of a shot you'll usually find. Maybe another disc thrown with a little bit more flip up to get closer to the basket straight. But beggars can't be choosers when it means getting through the gap and getting left. That oh wow, oh. that went under the log, okay. uh, but it hit behind the basket. So that that got a ways up there. Um, this is interesting. I don't think I've ever seen a forehand from a righty player on this hole. Gets a bad kick. Maybe it's because it's not the play. Um, sorry, Luke, but... <laughs> I think it, I, I think we talk about the miss, right? So with the spin, usually when you throw the uh, counterclockwise spin, when it hits an obstacle, it usually bounces and ricochets off to the right. right. Versus when you throw with the opposite spin, it'll ricochet off to the left. So when people say, you know, pick your misses... A lot of times it's actually throwing the spin, even if the shot shape may not necessarily fit the spin you're selecting, sometimes the ricochet is kind of what you have to plan for. So, okay. um, and yeah, that's a tough result for um, the shot. But he's here with the chance to, to stay in touch. Hold the par, maybe. okay. Mm. Uh, not to overshadow Johnny's uh, great drive as well. I do also want to give a shout out to Cecil Burkhart, who had the only ace for the event, and it was on this hole. He actually ricocheted off of a tree into it. Wow. So it was <laughs> quite the shot. I mean, I believe I'd it. rather be lucky than, than <laughs> good any good. day. Go, yeah. Yeah, and That's awesome. The luck was definitely in Cecil's favor. For sure. Carson, you know, keeping that one-stroke separation from Chad. Uh, but Chad staying in tow, I think. Can he close it up and get in that good footing? Clearing his way. Okay. All right. Yep. So it is all, a tie ball game. All coming down to this final hole. <laughs> okay. Guys, you are watching the Greater Peoria Tour. And I can tell you for a fact, and Dalton, 
voice your confidence here. This is growing. This is going places. Yeah, I'm definitely looking to continue it next year, uh, trying to regain the support from all the sponsors I had this year, uh, grow even bigger. You know, I, I'm doing this here for the community here to help grow the disc golf. Uh, it's great to see the success of it, of almost every event filling, everyone's having fun. Uh, I get the nice support here of Peyton on filming of all of them too, so everyone can enjoy watching them. Absolutely. This tee shot matters here for Chad. Oh, hits the middle trees here, the lone trees really to miss she out the gate. Left, yeah. Carson seeing that, let's see how he attacks this, if he just goes straight or if he's trying to attack the pin. He's trying to attack the pin through the right side because that, I mean, that's a strong shot. He has the power to get there. It looked like a fast driver, but it looks like it kind of just sat down. So, yeah, those two players are just going to have to invent their way up to the basket. Johnny with a low release. Uh, yeah. Hopefully he stays in the fairway there. Yeah, that's tough. I think you definitely want to be throwing the disc um, at the height of the crest of the hill for sure, and that kind of grabs early. No oh, way. no. Wow, that I was not way. expecting that to roll that far. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so now Luke forced to... Oh no, now he's going backwards. Wow. Some visual frustration for sure. Like, I, I got a taste of some of the coverage. I happen to miss this, and man... Yeah, so this is definitely kind of highlights the uh, dichotomy of like either taking your medicine or refusing the medicine. <laughs> yeah. And Luke is now seeing what happens when he refused to take the medicine. So, and maybe sometimes you got to learn it, right? So yeah, sometimes you got to take a couple steps back to make a few <laughs> steps forward. Yeah. So maybe this will be an experience. Maybe not the best one. Oh, and a ricochet yeah. from Johnny. Oh, man. This is rough. Everyone looking for a disc. Oh, my gosh. Oh, okay, so we actually had a ricochet, and Carson is down on the right-hand side of the slope trying to throw it back up to the basket. So he's not basket high. He's kind of to the right of the landing zone. He's got to have this shot. At least make it back to the fairway, if anything. He made it through, and it looks like it pushes. Oh, it oh, gets up to the green. Okay. I was going to reminisce on hole four of this round, which yeah. he totally greens a tree right out of the hand, but we'll see what Chad can do. This is this matters. Oh, no. Hits a tree about 15 feet in front. Now, this matters even more. Yeah. And then just tails off so far right. He's in circle, too. Yeah, so if Chad, Chad has to make this to force Carson to make this for them to, or for Carson to win. Yeah, and Johnny's over here on hole four. Um, oh my, Lanta, he, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I what, see a, that now. what a kick. And not hitting anything after the kick, too. That's yeah, what it means. Especially if you look at all these trees that this <laughs> disc fought through. Yeah, and him taking this time to figure out how do I get back to the fairway. Uh, he gets up there. Okay. I mean, he it looks like he clipped a little bit short. So, okay, this is important. Chad has to make this to force Carson to make it for the win. Oh, good bid just left side. Oh. <sighs> I think uh, hitting that tree that was just 15 in front of him and kind of got in his head. Maybe he thought it was kind of over at that point. Carson. Oh! oh running it. He could have laid it okay. up, but I think he, he wanted to keep pushing. I, I yeah. think Carson definitely is a ratings guy, so he wanted yeah. to give it a strong finish. But, hey, no harm done. He'll take a bogey to uh, secure the one-stroke lead over Chad, who will be tapping out his double oh johnny oof and i think we know most of these players recognize that today was not really a putting day for them maybe the yeah. first round yes the second round kind of changed things up so 
Johnny cleaning up. A you know what? Layer. It was great to watch all these guys. I, regardless of yeah. results, it was a lot of fun to see these guys play. Chad really putting pedal to the metal, chasing Carson down there at the end, who does take it. Congratulations again, Carson. Yeah. Is this win number three of the tour for uh, him? Three or four. He's been kind of killing it. He's Dang. he's trying to make a statement here. I know he's trying to better himself uh, moving forward like nine. as a player to like Johnny push Aeneas, to that pro level. I'm excited to see him uh, move along. And also, yeah, I'm, I just want to see a little bit more, let's say, turnover in the ranks here in the MA1 category in Peoria. So I'm super stoked in to see three place, new names here. Yeah, Carson, yes, always glad to see him. But maybe, just maybe, there'll be some MPO coverage a little bit more often next year, and we'll actually see Carson place, on that Tyler card Mom. a lot. Yeah, that would be really cool. That would be great to see. Um, here you're just watching some uh, place, awards and payouts uh, being done. Um, I'm just reading them off my phone here, just trying to push through Very the day here. <laughs> yeah, it's just a C tier, so nothing uh, spectacular. The Greater Peoria Open will be, though. Um, Jake Johnson, uh, Pink Hat with the envelopes here. He's the one that started the event for me, so... I just want to give him a shout out for assisting with uh, the event at Megiddo. And also want to give a huge shout out to any volunteers uh, that helped out at all for the tour up to this point and also for Greater Peoria Open. It's going to be a, a larger course schedule, so yeah. definitely volunteers are important. Shout out to, uh, yeah, I was going to say Josh. Yeah, I think you were going to point him out too in mm -hmm. the uh, green uh, shirt there. He's actually one of my best friends here. I talk Second to him like place, every single Chad day. <laughs> He's helped set up every single course for the entire nice. tour and tear down. Wow. Um, he's no uh, going to volunteer Carson be my Fowler. assistant for the Greater Peoria Woo! Open as well. Okay. So can't thank him enough for all of the assistance in operations. Very cool. All right, guys. Man, that was uh, the battle at Megiddo. I know it's been a long time since the last uh, coverage update, but thank you guys so very much for tuning in. I appreciate your viewership so much. Um, any parting thoughts for your viewers here? Yeah, I just want to thank you all for watching and supporting the tour, and especially if you have come out to an event and supported it in that way as well. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, do all those YouTube things hey, that's, that's my to uh, help out Peyton here at PLD Disc Golf. Uh, I can't thank him enough for all the support he has given me throughout the years of filming all of my events here. Thanks, Dalton. And come back and check out the GPO coverage. It'll be coming your guys' way here very soon. Thanks again. Catch you later.